So here we're looking at the anatomy of the liver and the pancreas and the major blood vessels in the abdominal cavity. And first of all we see the liver and we notice that there's different lobes in the liver. Here's the right main lobe and the left lobe. And over the top of the liver there would be the diaphragm and above this we have the thoracic cavity. And underneath the liver we notice this organ here which is the pancreas. And looping round the head of the pancreas we have the first part of the small intestine which is the duodenum. And we notice that the pancreas is an organ with a head, a body and a tail. And this is the right hand side here and this is the left hand side here. So we notice that the head of the pancreas is towards the right and the tail points off towards the left. There's a long duct running through the length of the pancreas. This is the main pancreatic duct. Now you might know that the pancreas contains exocrine tissue and this exocrine tissue in the pancreas produces digestive enzymes in inactivated forms which pass into this central pancreatic duct, go along the pancreatic duct and under the right conditions are released here into the lumen of the duodenum. Once in the lumen of the duodenum these digestive enzymes are activated and they will digest proteins, fats and carbohydrates. You might also remember that in the pancreas there is endocrine tissue. The endocrine tissue in the pancreas is often described as the pancreatic islets of Langerhan. The alpha cells in the pancreatic islets produce glucagon and the beta cells in the pancreatic islets produce insulin. But those products are endocrine. They leave directly in the blood. Whereas the pancreatic juices containing the substances to be activated into digestive enzymes, these are the exocrine products exiting the pancreas via this pancreatic duct. Now under the liver we see the gallbladder here and the gallbladder stores and concentrates bile. So the bile is produced in the liver as the liver concentrates the bilirubin from the blood. The bilirubin in turn is derived from the breakdown of haemoglobin. The bile leaves the liver and goes along the duct here. This is the cystic duct going into the gallbladder. When fatty food especially goes into the duodenum, the gallbladder will discharge bile going down through the cystic duct and down the common bile duct here. Goes down the common bile duct. And the common bile duct actually goes through the tissue of the pancreas. And if we look in here, you can probably see where the gallbladder comes, not the gallbladder, the bile ducts coming from the gallbladder pass down through the tissues of the pancreas and it meets up with this pancreatic duct. So here the common bile duct meets the pancreatic duct and this final area where the ducts are common is called the ampulla. And in the old days that was called the ampulla of Varta. There's also a duct which goes into the pancreas, a duct from the pancreas that goes into the duodenum separately. So that's a smaller pancreatic duct. 
but the main pancreatic duct is combining with the common bile duct to form this ampulla of vata and that is discharging the bile and the pancreatic juices into the duodenum via this sphincter here called the sphincter of Odi. And the idea is that this will allow material out from the pancreatic duct and the bile duct and the ampulla into the duodenum, but that material cannot reflux from the duodenum back into the bile duct and back into the pancreatic duct. And once in the lumen of the duodenum, the bile will emulsify fats. And once those fats are emulsified, they will be digested with lipase enzymes produced by the pancreas. And at the same time, other pancreatic enzymes will be producing or will be digesting the proteins, converting them into amino acids and breaking down carbohydrates into simpler sugars. And then also on this model, we notice the major blood vessels. On the right side, we have the inferior vena cava, taking blood back to the right atrium. On the left side, we have the aorta, carrying blood from the left ventricle. So this is returning blood to the right atrium, back up the way. This is taking blood down to the lower parts of the body from the left ventricle. And here we can see the bifurcation of the aorta as it becomes the iliac arteries. And here we see the iliac veins taking blood back up. And we can also see this from the back where we see the major blood vessels, the inferior vena cava carrying blood back up towards the right atrium the aorta carrying blood down, branches coming off the aorta to perfuse various tissues. Here we see the back of the pancreas. And these are actually the renal arteries taking blood to the respective kidneys. So there we have some of the main structures involved here and a little bit about what they do. But we're going to include some more detail in the next video.